Hi, I'm Kurt from Ozama and welcome to our very first episode of Workshop Wednesdays. Hot on the heels of our Tiger One restoration, we have launched into two brand new projects. And this series, we hope, will document the whole process from start to finish. Behind me here in Workshop One, Glenn and Bo have started on our running Stug 3G restoration. And in Workshop Two, Jess and Daryl have begun work on our static 1944 Yag Panther restoration. We'll be giving you weekly updates on these projects, so be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and share these videos. It really helps us stay motivated to keep them coming out if we see that you're enjoying them. So without further ado, let's get on with episode one of the Yag Panther. So what is a Yag Panther? Well, if you want to learn about that, the Chieftain is definitely your man. But in brief, the Yag Panther was a self-propelled tank destroyer. It mounted an 88mm gun enclosed in a heavily armoured fixed fighting compartment on the chassis of a panther. Over the past six years, we have been collecting the pieces we need to make this tank. And even though it's only going to be a static display, it will look spectacular when it's finished. The hull and engine decks are in great condition, and that's what the boys are working on now. This is the back deck, the back engine deck for the Yag Panther uh, restoration. I've been working on this for the last two days. This has been all bent out of shape. I've got most of the twists and like eggs out of it and, and bulges, but the uh, majority of it now is just clamping it down, uh, heating up a little bit more, pulling it back together and, and re-welding it. Two hinges for it. And this is the cover. The cover. So that'll come off. One there, one here and they bolt onto the, the cover, which is essentially that, but we've got it on the floor over there. And then this cover goes on via all these bolt holes. We just had to heat it up and, and get all the rust and that off it to, to pry it up. It had a hook that we had to cut off because there was only a tiny little slither of it left. So Rob supplied us with some old original plate, with, uh, some nice pitting to match the other hooks. I'll cut it with the oxy clean it all up, drill the hole, and then just simply weld it on in place. about 400 of these tanks were made during the war, so parts are really scarce. Luckily, the boys are sticklers for attention to detail. So this is the back of the superstructure, and this is the back, like it's a little, like little trap door almost, it's just for throwing out like the empty shells. And that, so that goes on there. We'll have to weld that hole up. We just had to use that so we could center it in our lathe to turn this. So I'll weld all that fillet. There'll be another hole that's drilled here, and that's for the lock, locking mechanism on the inside. So you've got the two hinges, these are tapered bolts. They've got these, you can see they're, they're tapered in here so they fit, fit in there nice and snug. Got two there. They go like that. So what I've done is I've cut a bit of flat bar which was thick and I've tapered it with a grinder, which took a while, and then added an extra bit of flat bar on the end to get that length and then tapered that too. So originally what they would have done is they would have just machined a bit of flat. So stuck it on like a milling machine and just mach milled it out in like five minutes. So that took about a half an hour of, with a grinder of just kept going back and forth, back and forth, tapering it. Oh, I'll sit something on that there. But yeah, essentially that's, that's the back of the trap door. Our project manager Daryl has been very busy turning this massive hinge for the rear fighting compartment hatch. But unfortunately, no matter how long we searched, sooner or later we had to manufacture parts and that's what we had to do with this hinge. Using the holes and the positions of holes that we already had, we were able to remanufacture it. It's a pretty big piece to do in our little workshop. We've got most tools here, but you know, it's, uh, it didn't come out too bad, I don't think. We didn't have an original to see how it was done exactly. So what we've done here, this hinge only goes into this pin to here and the other one here so that we can pull it apart and, and move it off. If we ever come across an old one, we can just bolt it straight on. Basically, we, ju we just started with some round stock bar and some flat steel. We turned the hinge knuckle here and here, and then added pieces to square it off, and then added this big tongue here, 
welded it and then machined it down. A hinge is something that's obviously tricky to get right, but something even as simple as a handle for the rear hatch takes time, money and a whole lot of heat. That one there is good, but I think I might have found this one a little bit too hard. These blocks are part of the hatch locking mechanism and they're held in place with tapered bolts. Unfortunately, we're missing one of these bolts and we have no idea what sort of condition the others are in. So Jess is going to heat them up red hot and try and recover them. For original parts, it's always worth going the extra mile to try and salvage what we can. bolts are in good shape, but Jess still needs to turn the missing one. We can calibrate the lathe to the specs of the original so it'll be indistinguishable from the real ones. kind of funny how we seem to make a big deal out of just getting some bolts out but every little knock with a hammer every little bit of weld or every little detail that we manage to get finished brings us one step closer to getting this exhibit out of the workshop and on display in the museum for everyone to enjoy so join us next week as we take a look at workshop one with Bo and Glenn working on the Stug 3 and see what sort of progress they're making there so until then I'm Kurt from Ozama and I'll see you on the next one <laughs>